This is my soul. This is what I do here. And a similar statement is found in the first canto, 19th chapter, verse 33 of Srimad Bhagavatam. There is no doubt about one's becoming freed from all reactions to sinful activities after visiting a devotee or touching his lotus feet or giving him a sitting place. Even by remembering the activities of such a Vaishnava, Vaishnava one becomes purified along with one's whole family. And what then can be said of rendering direct service to him? See how wonderful this service to the devotees is? It's really, really powerful. Um, and in the Adi Purana, here's my favorite. There is the following statement by Lord Krishna himself addressed to Arjuna. My dear Partha, one who claims to be my devotee is not so. Only a person who claims to be the devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. No one can approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly. One must approach him through his pure devotees. Therefore, in the system of Vaishnava activities, the first duty is to accept a devotee as spiritual master and then to render service unto him. So clear, huh? Yeah, so nice. Sri Rupa Goswami affirms that all the quotations given in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu from different scriptures are accepted by the great Acharyas and devotees of the Lord. Yes, we accept them because they're coming from Krishna. Uh, we're devotees of Krishna. That means we accept whatever Krishna says. If Krishna tells us that he wants us to serve his devotees first, then we serve the devotees first. And it's a fact. The um, Vaishnava etiquette is, if you are engaged in worshiping the Lord, doing arti, or even bathing and dressing the Lord, and a devotee comes, then you should immediately stop the worship of the Lord and receive the devotee and worship and serve the devotee. This is the etiquette. So if this is the case, then imagine how important is service of the devotee. See? It's so important that, um, uh, what, what was his name? Uh, Sutta, the, the father of Sutta Goswami, who spoke Srimad Bhagavatam at Naimisharanya. Romaharshan Roma Sutta. Romaharshan Sutta was killed by Lord Balaram because he didn't observe this principle. Hmm? Sutta Goswami was speaking about the Supreme Lord. And then Balaram himself came. But because he didn't recognize Balaram, either as the Supreme Lord or even as a devotee, he didn't stop his speaking. He didn't get up and, and he didn't even offer obeisances, nothing. So what, you know, Balaram's going, what are you doing sitting on the Vyasa sun if you don't even know this? Huh? And he killed him with a blade of kusha grass. Bap. <laughs> See, Balaram, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he's also the first devotee of the Lord. He's the first spiritual master. And he's also the Lord's abode, the Lord's clothing, the Lord's paraphernalia. I mean, he, he is the Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead. Huh? That's Balaram. So when Balaram comes, of course, we give him all respect and, and reverence. Uh, and he came again as Nitai, Nityananda Prabhu. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Nityananda, or Krishna and Balaram themselves. So when we chant their name, we become blissful. <laughs> uh, then, of course, there's that famous shloka from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, uh, na Brahmana, na Kshatriya, na Vaishya, na Shudra. Na brahmachari, na grihasta, na vanaprasta, na sannyasi. Huh? Gopi, bharta, parakamalyor, dasa, dasa, anudasa. Huh? The famous verse, I am not a brahman, I'm not a kshatriya, I'm not a vaisha, I'm not a shudra. I'm not a brahmachari, I'm not a grihasta, I'm not a vanaprasta, I'm not a sannyasi. What am I? I am simply the servant 
of the servant, of the servant, etc., etc., of Sri Krishna, the master of the gopis. You see? What am I? He doesn't say, I'm the servant of Krishna. He says, I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant, etc. Ad infinitum. <laughs> this is devotee. And this is how Lord Chaitanya identified himself. So if Lord Chaitanya thinks like that, then, of course, we should also think like that. And that is the, the meaning of serving the devotees. Uh, that we put the devotees' welfare actually above our own. Uh, we could very easily be sitting on the beach in, in uh, where's a nice beach? Acapulco, yeah, everybody, everybody thinks of Acapulco, right? It's probably blazing hot there right now. But anyway, could be sitting on the beach in Acapulco, um, you know, doing on any kind of nonsense. But what are we doing? We're here serving the devotees because that's the best thing to do. Huh? What else what is better than that? After hearing these shlokas, I mean, even serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly is not as glorious as serving his devotees. That's what we'll be doing in the spiritual world also, serving Krishna's devotees. Huh? It's more important to serve his devotees than to serve Krishna himself. The next heading is serving the Lord according to one's position. In the Padma Purana, there is a statement that one should perform the ceremonies for the Lord according to one's financial position. Everyone should observe the different ceremonies and celebrations of the Lord by all means. Uh, so if you're very poor and you live in a grass shack somewhere and all you can do is offer a little water or a tulsi leaf, then the Lord accepts that. But if you're living in a, a huge mansion and you have servants and employees and all kinds of facility and then you just offer a little water and a leaf, what kind of service is that? Uh, no, you should offer what you can actually afford according to your means. Uh, the standard of devotional service given or actually exemplified by Rupa and Sanatana Goswami is that they offered 50% of their accumulated wealth, 50% of their income. Uh, that's the standard for grihasta, what to speak of sannyasi or renunciant, uh, brahmachari. A brahmachari is supposed to give 100%. Brahmachari is supposed to give everything for this, to the spiritual master. Yeah? And our brahmacharis actually do that. They actually do. All of them, all the brahmacharis here, they've all given everything. Huh? That's the actual standard. <laughs> Pure devotional service. Pure devotional service is just, you don't, you don't keep anything back. You don't hold anything back. You give everything. Huh? Krishna is everything. So we give everything. And he's given everything to us. Why shouldn't we give everything to him? And if we do that, he gives us his own self. So just imagine the power of this devotional service. It's hard to imagine. It's really hard to, to conceive how wonderful it is, how powerful it is. If you just do it, then you'll find out. <laughs> That's what we advise everyone. So one more, and then we'll stop for questions, I think. No? Yeah, maybe one or two more. Performing devotional service in Kartika. One of the most important of these ceremonial functions is called Urja Vrata. Urja Vrata is observed in the month of Kartika, October and November, especially in Vrindavan. There is a specific program for temple worship of the Lord in his Damodar form. Damodar refers to Krishna's being bound up with rope by his mother, Yashoda. It is said that just as Lord Damodar is very dear to his devotees, so the month known as Damodar or Kartika is also very dear to them. The execution of devotional service during Urja Vrata in the month of Kartika is especially recommended to be performed at Mathura. This system is still followed by many devotees. They go to Matra or Vrindavan 
and stay there during the month of Kartika, specifically to perform devotional services during this period. Uh, so all of us who have been to India, and especially those who have lived in Vrindavan, we've all seen this, uh, especially the renunciants there in Vrindavan, do all kinds of special vows and uh, special austerities during this month. And every night in the month of October, November, the Sri Damoda Ashtaka is sung in every temple in Vrindavan. Uh, this is a very beautiful song. But once you once you hear this song, then you you know you can't forget Lord Damodar. Uh, so, uh, in the Padma Purana, it is said, "The Lord may offer liberation or material happiness to a devotee, but after some devotional service has been executed." particularly in Matra during 